Ah, oh, there's the man. There's. <laughs> Here I am. Okay. Okay, everyone. So just wanted. There we go. Um. So morning, everyone. I contacted Eric a little while ago. Definitely wanted to get him in for an interview. Um, he's one of the brands that we kind of fell in love. If you guys have been listening to the Bearded Time podcast, we're huge fans of what he's doing with his brand. Um, so Eric, just introduce yourself to the people. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm Eric. I founded the uh, EC Anderson watch company uh, in uh, five years ago. And I'm based in Gothenburg, Sweden, where we actually make the... Uh, the watches as well from uh, from a new model and, and forward. Nice, nice. And how, about how old is the brand? Uh, it became a limited company in 2016. Mm -hmm. And our first design, I think, was released in 2015. So it's, uh, it's a little more than five years. OK. So I know people, of course, they, they'll want to know about the brand, but wanted to ask you a little bit more about yourself. How did you come to love watches? I mean, how did you go from loving watches to creating your own brand? A, a little history. Yeah, so um, both my dad and my granddad is, uh, they're, they're engineers with, uh, and their specialty is uh, fine mechanics. Uh, my grandfather actually, um, he made uh, tiny steam engines mm. by hand in his own workshop. And I, I, when I was a child, I, I thought that was mind blowing how, how something that is in function so simple mm -hmm. required so much uh, consideration and thought to have it work, uh, how do you say, reliably. Yeah. And so I, I thought it was really cool. And when I got a little older, like 10 or 11 or so, I realized that the, the most advanced type of a fine mechanical en engine was mm -hmm. actually in a uh, wristwatch. So that's where my niche of interest uh, was born. Okay. And from there, how did you jump into actually starting the brand? Uh, so I was a collector. Uh, I was buying a lot of vintage watches and I had different um, stages in my collection interest, you might say. Mm -hmm. I collected Swiss brands like Omega and Tudor and later on some Soviet styled uh, watches. Uh, and then I got into more contemporary style like the Tudor Black Bay, I think was the first Tudor I bought. But none of the watches were perfect to me. I always <laughs> were looking for like the watch yeah. for me. Uh, and so I decided I, I will never find it. So I, um, I started researching a bit. Can I do one myself for myself? And I was uh, I was in forums uh, writing about the whole uh, journey of this, mm -hmm. uh, and the interest grew uh, uh, among other people, and they wanted to buy one as well when they saw how how it became. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why not sell them as well? So it, it became a, a, a brand organically, you might say. Okay. One of the main things I forgot to ask you straight off the bat, what are you wearing? And I'm going to take a, a wild guess that it's an ECA, but what are you wearing this morning? Oh, well, this afternoon for you. Uh, <laughs> this, this is embarrassing. <laughs> I, I, I actually, uh, I forgot my watch. <laughs> <laughs> It happens to the best of us. It happens yeah, yeah, yeah. to the best of us. Well, I, the story is actually, I, I was uh, out fishing yesterday mm -hmm. and I slipped on a, on a rock Ooh. and I, I smashed a watch in, into, uh, uh, into a big rock and it, it, the bracelet fell off. Wow. So I didn't have time to just insert a new uh, uh, spring bar before I left for work today. <laughs> so mm. that's why I, I forgot it. Okay. So... One thing I wanted to ask you is, so I've s seen some of the designs. Who's the main person who's kind of behind the designs of the watch? Uh, yeah, that's me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So 
um, the Denise, the Calypso Sport. Um, where do you pull your inspiration for those designs? Well, I mean, all all my watches, all my designs are are uh, uh, personal desires that I have in a watch at that time. Mm -hmm. So I really want a sport watch. I really want to wear a sport watch. So that's what I'm going to do, going to make. And the diameter measurements of that watch is what would be fitting to myself. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's always my main concern when doing anything. Is, is, is this right for me? Then yeah, let's do it. And hopefully other people will like this as well. So I don't really design uh, with the market focus in mind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but really what I uh, decide most myself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's interesting you say that because even though you don't, you're saying you don't really design for the market, I have to say a lot of your designs are unique, but at the same time wearable. So I, I've had, I had spent some time with the Calypso Sport and it's, it's one of my favorite watches. I kind of fell in love with it um, cool. simply because of the dimensions, um, the bracelet, um, I, I had the polar dial, and it, it's just a really nice watch. Um, and I want to know, so kind of walk us through the process, because I know you have a couple designs and a couple watches now, but kind of walk us through the process of when you first think of a design and, and putting it on paper and the manufacturing on your side. Yeah, so first of all, I, I just start you know, uh, drawing a few ideas that I have in, in my, in my brain. Mm -hmm. uh, what will be the, the perfect design for, for the purpose of this watch? So mm -hmm. the Calypso is cool because it has this integrated bracelet, which is a lot more durable during wear and tear mm -hmm. than, than a, just a regular 20 mil uh, strap. Mm -hmm. uh, and also it had the, the contract layer kind of dial to it, mm -hmm. so you could wear it in blistering snow or in just bright sunlight without, you know, being disoriented. Mm -hmm. uh, so I start with these things in mind. I'd, oh, most of the time I make like 10 different drawings before I settle on one. Mm -hmm. And when we're starting the, the manufacturing process, we redesign, I don't know, five, 10 times. Mm -hmm. So the end result is, like twenty percent, what I thought it would be from the beginning. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's always better at the end, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you you could never, you could never uh, prepare yourself for what's what will be the the uh, release, so to speak. Okay, um, so one of the main reasons I wanted to get you on is uh, you guys just released your first GMT. Yeah. Um, which is a pretty interesting design, and I wanted to talk to you, kind of go over. What what was the process like like for you guys when it comes to that? Um, well, so when I started the brand, I always wanted to make as much uh, of the manufacturing myself mm -hmm. or at our office in Gothenburg. Uh, so per each model we released, we brought home more and more of the assembly, quality control and manufacturing. So we invested in, in a few more machines there, a few more tools there. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's very expensive. So it had to take the time that it took. Mm -hmm. And for this model, we, we had everything we needed to make it ourselves. So almost the whole watch is made in, in Gothenburg, aside from the, the Swiss movement, which is modified here. Um, so, uh, but as, as of the design itself, mm -hmm. I really wanted to have a GMT watch because I have uh, business partners and friends living abroad. I thought it was cool to have like two time zones. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had uh, quite some trouble with magnetism with our previous models. Oh, wow. And that was really bothering me because when you ship it in the, uh, you know, the, the courier trucks and uh, I don't know what they do, but sometimes it ends up being magnetized. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to make something that was magnet proof. Gotcha. Uh, so I started researching 
what we could do because we couldn't buy uh, silicon hair springs and stuff like that. Mm -mm. Uh, so it had to be something else. And we found a, uh, a Swedish manufacturer of, of special alloys that we worked with to uh, to get this magnetic shield that we call the Contra Gauss. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's how it uh, turned out. And of course, I wanted to use our surface treatments with polished and sandblasted as we've uh, come accustomed to with the Denise and the Calypso. Yeah. Now, I know you're saying, you know, as you went from watch to watch, you kind of brought more in-house. With this last watch, with the Contra Gauss, how, how was it for you guys? Was, did you find the process difficult? Did you find it, you know, we've already done this a couple of times and, you know, this no, is a little no, bit no. easier? Extremely hard. I mean, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I was very close to just giving up a few times. Wow. Uh, it was horrible. It was a lot more expensive than I could ever imagine. Mm -hmm. I, I, I put a lot of money into this uh and a lot of time yeah and yeah. effort and just learning how to do things and just this one screw to fit there and make that go well with this one and just and the the tolerances are micromillimeters yeah everything can go wrong and everything has gone wrong <laughs> <laughs> before it didn't so yeah i'm very happy to to have a, a finished product Okay. So from from the design to the finished product, I know you guys just released it. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it was last Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. How long did that process take? Uh, sorry, uh, again. Sorry. If so, was so from the point where you you first started designing the watch till last Tuesday, where you released it, how long did that process take? Uh, one and a half year. Uh, okay. Approximately, yeah. So I had a few designs going on for a few years, but one and a half years ago, the lines for this particular design was drawn. Mm. Uh, and since then we've been working on it, uh, aside our other watches, watch releases. So okay. we, we took our time with this one. Okay. Um, I have Analog Lost who say he's a big fan of the Denise. I think a lot of people like that watch. Uh, it, it's it's a beautiful representation of a diver. I think a lot of people just like that design. Um, I, what what kind of pushed you to make something? I don't want to say it's so out there, but it's definitely a unique looking diver. What kind of yeah inspired yeah. you to do that? I mean. I really like, I, first of all, I want to do something unique. It couldn't look like any other microband diver out there. Yeah. Because yeah, it's a million. Buy that <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> why, why, why make it? Yeah. So I wanted to do, make something unique and without being like too crazy because you don't want to be like a gimmick either. Mm. So you, you want to make something that is functional, durable, and looks good. Yeah. And I was really into broad. Uh, lugs at the time so I thought that would be a cool thing to have like where the the lugs uh, point out a little bit even though you have the bracelet on or the the rubber strap on mm -hmm. um, and so that was the the main idea and I wanted to have uh, the dye bustle that was is useful all the time mm -hmm. but add something extra to it so I most people know that you can use your your vessel as a uh, compass Mm -hmm. but it's quite hard to remember how to do it and where to point and where to look. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make that a bit simpler without having a bunch of text on the vessel. So just uh, adding that function was, was really key to the design, I think. Yeah, I, 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 it's a definitely a beautiful watch. Um, and it's a great example of how we do not need to overthink designs and still be able to come up with a distinctive silhouette. It's true. Uh, what I find is with a lot of micro brands, you have to find that perfect balance between unique where people like the design and they want to buy that particular watch, but at the yeah. same time, some form of versatility, some form of, of, of what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, 
some way of the watch still being wearable. Because um, yeah. a lot of times with these unique designs, they're great. You buy them, and then in two days, you don't just use like, them. You don't use them. And yeah. it's just like, why, why did I? It, it looked great in pictures. I wore it for like, it's like, um, I always compare it to like when, when a woman buys a dress for a specific event. Yeah. And she'll <laughs> never wear it again. Um, exactly. It, it's how I feel about sometimes with these designs. They're so unique. They're so out there, but they, they, they kind of go against the grain. And, and as a wearer, as a consumer, you just feel like, okay, when am I going to wear this? I'm, I'm never yeah. going to wear this. So why did I buy this in the first place? And yeah. it's so just... that's the thing as well, actually. I, I, was, I always wanted watches to be, you have to be able to wear them all the time. Yeah. So I'm really into one watch at a time. I don't want three different watches with me every day. I want one watch that we work with, I don't know, rock climbing and diving or whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And it should work with a t-shirt or a, a suit if you need it to. And it should look cool in either setting. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, agreed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I know you, you went over uh, your time as a collector. Just wanted to ask you, what are some of the watches you have in your collection? But right now, I don't have many at all. Uh, thing is, when you have your own brand, Yep. And you're and you're wearing something else. It kind of kills the conversation quite <laughs> rapidly. <laughs> I I I got you. I got yeah, you. but I, I was I was really into Tudor for a while. Oh, I okay. thought that Rolex was a bit too mainstream, and I thought they were too expensive for what you got. Uh, so for me, Tudor was everything good about the Rolex, uh, with an you know appropriate price. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm a fan of Tudor. Okay. Um, one thing I, I, I did also kind of like about the brand is the fact that you guys make really limited runs of, of your watches. So yeah. it, it's, if I have it on, I almost never walk into any, uh, into another person who has the watch on. So yeah. what, what was kind of the idea behind that? Did you guys walk in knowing, okay, we're going to make, small run did you, was that decision made later how did that happen well the thing is i really like i really like the process of of making a new model i i like the design creative part of it and i like what you learn when you when you manufacture it it's kind of an addiction really because we, when you've been doing one watch for a while say the the calypso mm -hmm. you get you know it. I, I know how to do it. I know how to make it. I know how to design it. It's, I want a new, uh, wait, sorry, uh, challenge. Mm -hmm. So that's that's really why I, I don't want to make too many of, of each model. I wanted to do something new every time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So now you guys have kind of gone through the process. You've brought a lot of stuff in house for the Contra Gauss. Do you see you guys continuing that with with future models, or is this one of those? Ah, oh, you know what? This was nice. Uh, we're we're gonna kind of go back to the regular process after this. Yeah. So what I noticed is, I mean, it's really expensive to make this watch, uh, and the price of it is it, it's quite high. But it couldn't. It really couldn't be cheaper. Because yeah. uh, we 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 wouldn't make any any money of it at all if we if we just lower the price of it. So what I'm, I'm trying to do now is, is actually make a cheaper version of it. Oh, okay. Uh, still in-house, still uh, in Gothenburg, everything as the the, uh, the first contract house, mm -hmm. but with a few finishing treatments that are uh, less expensive to make in, in, terms, in terms of time and, and that kind of thing, uh, and also not make our own rotors for this one. Mm -hmm. Use the Solita rotor right off the bat, and that will save some some money. And we can uh, hopefully have a um, have a new Contra Gauss version out there for under I don't know in US dollars, but probably sixteen hundred or so. Yeah, I, I, it's it's weird because me and um... And my uh, my co-host Brad on Graded Time, um, we done a video when the Contra Gauss first came out, and 
we definitely were just like, you know, the price is high, but at the same time, we kind of understand why the price is the price. Yeah. I mean, if you guys are going to go forward and do all these things, bring all these things in house, that costs money, especially for the first time that you're doing it. Yes. So it, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, it's it, as a consumer on one hand, you're just like, whoa, that's kind of more than what I'm used to. But at the other hand, you have to understand the, this is why that it's at that price. And yeah. even at that price, we, in our minds, we're thinking you guys are barely making enough on top yeah. for all yeah. the work that you probably made. So it's, true. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a tricky thing. It's a tricky thing. So no, I, it really is. And I understand people. I mean, uh, the big brands that can make thousands of each model, uh, economy of scale and all of that, mm. of course it's, it's cheaper for them. But if you're a small brand, a micro brand, an independent brand, you really can't, you don't have that luxury of, of that scale. Yeah. Um, and I mean, we, we will not make up the development cost of this watch for a long time. Wow. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I think it's still, I really think it's the right price. I think that if, yeah. if enough people understand what we're doing with this watch and how much effort and time we put into it and the quality of it, they, it's, it's quite, it's very, very reasonable actually. Yeah. It, it's. It's a watch that I, I think, as a consumer, if you're someone who's going to get that watch, you're getting it for that specific reason. Um, yeah. You're getting it because it's not like every other watch that you've seen out there. Yeah. You're getting it specifically for that design. Um, you're getting and you it get because it, it's, yeah, because you love the the craftsmanship behind it. Yeah. Uh, but, but any chance, I forgot to ask you earlier, do you happen to have one run around, one of the um, contract houses? Um, not the finished one here. No, that would oh. be the one I smashed into a rock yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! So so okay. How did this happen? You, you said you were finish. You were fishing, and you, yeah. what? You just you coming off the boat? What, what? Yeah, yeah. So I was out fishing uh, by the uh, by the coast. Uh, it, it was really slippery at the at the rocks from from getting off on and off the boat. Mm -hmm. And so I slipped and I, I uh, stopped the fold with my hand and the, uh, the brace that got stuck, I think in between two rocks and just one uh, spring bar got flying away. And so I had to, uh, to leave it at home. I, I, I did plan to just insert a new pin and, and mm -hmm. wear it today, but I was a bit stressed <laughs> coming here. So I actually forgot it. So, so you're, you're at the main office right now? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. And, and in relation to where you are right now, where's the manufacturing? Is it in the same building? Do you guys have another site? Uh, uh, so, yeah, this is one, one of the, the places we work. So here we have uh, uh, the sandblasting and polishing and all of that we do in this, in this room here and some of the assembly as well. And uh, how, I want also want to ask, how many people on your team? Um, but we, we're two people in the core core team, so we're very, very small. Wow. Uh, but but we have a, a few consultants here in, in Gothenburg, uh, uh, which we're working with the, the milling and the three D printing and all that. That's that's uh, that's another how do you say buffer team mm. sort of thing. So uh, one thing I, I know I didn't even go over it. The reason I remember is because I think that's a, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, that's a hand sanitizer um, right behind your, your left shoulder. Uh, is, or is that a soap dispenser? Um, your, your left. That yeah. one? Yeah. <laughs> that so, actually uh, for, for paper. Oh, okay. Uh, it, but it just brought to mind. So with everything going on, COVID-19, one, how are you guys doing? Um, in this kind of climate, and, I mean, you're a small team, so I guess you guys can kind of keep away from each other while you're doing everything. But how's everything been for you guys? I mean, financially, it's the it's the in a hundred years is probably the worst timing to uh, release the a luxury product. So um, the sales are slower than they should be. 
-hmm. but we get by and that's fine uh, and health wise we're doing well Sweden is uh, not so strict with the quarantine rules I mm. think those are considerate they stay home and I try doing so myself uh, but yeah it, it's everything is shut down really it, 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 there's no not much people around uh, unfor uh, fortunately our manufacturing is up and running so I'm here and I'm I'm, uh, I'm working on the watches as usual so yeah it, it is, it's another interesting too, thing too is you literally get your hands on every watch that goes out oh yeah yeah wow I make every, most of it myself yeah wow um any ideas in the future of bringing some more people on or or is it gonna be a two-man team for a little while i mean i'm not sure maybe yeah I, sometimes i think that would be a good idea mm -hmm. it would be a great idea to just lift some weight off my shoulders mm -hmm. on the other hand i like the flexibility mm -hmm. of just i don't know how how long i would make the contract as watch as 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 long as it's fun to do so, and then I probably gonna release another one and and discard this one, you know. So it's, it will be a limited run, although I don't know how many pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but as long as it's fun, uh, mm -hmm. and I like that flexibility in just being a small team and and doing what you, uh, yeah, what you what you think is interesting at the moment. Okay. So building on that, what do you see the future holds for EC Anderson? Mm, well, we're going to continue this in-house uh, line. Uh, I want to make a, a bit more, I, I don't want to say crazy designs, but cool solutions to simple problems <laughs> that would be that would be great uh, so i have a few ideas in mind uh, okay. try to stand out and and try to show people that watchmaking is still fun you know because a, a lot of watches that are released the safe bets you know you, you get the divers you get the dress watches they're basically the same uh, I want to, you know, show people that don't know much about watches that this is quite cool, engineering-wise and design-wise. Um, so yeah, I got a, I got a few ideas. Okay, cool, cool. Um, before we head on out, anything else you kind of wanted to, to, to go over any of your ex experiences? Well, actually, no, I, I have a few more questions actually. Um. So you built up the brand. At what point in time it, it, can you, if you look back, do you think, okay, that we've kind of, we're good. We've kind of made it. Not made it in terms of, of, of huge, but made it in terms of, okay, I could still continue to do this. Because I feel with a lot of micro brands, there's that point where they kind of, it, it, it's they make the decision either I'm going to keep on going with this or you know what this is just it's not worth it. it's not worth it like what yeah. was that point for you I mean it's like I said before it's like an addiction you, you think <laughs> like this model I'm working on right now I don't see myself needing to do another one this is this is so great this is the best mm -hmm. and and when you release it like two two days later you're like oh yeah I got a really cool idea for the next one and and you were you're exhausted from all the work mm -hmm. for bringing one model into production, mm -hmm. but it takes two days of resting, and you want to make it all over again. So I I don't see myself getting to a point where I want to stop. Uh, even though, I mean, I think so. <laughs> In the middle of the work, I I think so quite often, but it never. I couldn't. I couldn't stop it. I, I guess I, I I mean more in terms of the past, like it, it from when the brand started. Was there what was that point in time in the past where you kind of just said, "Okay, it's, this okay, is working. Yeah. This this yeah. I I could definitely move forward with this." So probably when we had the first success with the North Sea, uh, we had. I think we, we had our first launch on Kickstarter. Uh -huh. 
with the concept design that wasn't working and we tried it once more and for the North Sea we we nailed it I think and we sold quite a few of them and that gave us uh, the budget to to build up the the company and the tools we needed and all that so that was probably the the and uh, the point where I understood that I can live uh, out of doing this. I think I did. some people might not be familiar, but I just wanted to show everyone. So this was the second version, but you kind of give everyone an idea of, of yeah. what Eric means by the, the North Sea. It, it, it's, it, it's one of the interesting things, and just speaking as a guy who likes watches and as a consumer, because you make a limited run, I always feel like I'm trying to catch up <laughs> to, to, to you guys. So when I first started researching the brand and I saw the North Sea, it, it happens with a lot of brands, especially when they have a limited run. You see a watch and you're just like, okay, oh my gosh, um, I, need to, I, need to, I need to have that watch. And then you start doing the research and you're just like, they don't make that watch no anymore. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was cool. And, and I have just a, a a personal connection to you guys because I, when I first saw the, the Calypso Sport um, with the Polar Dial, I fell in love with the watch, um, and I was just like, I gotta have this thing. I gotta, I gotta. Whether I'm lying to myself and I'm saying I'm getting it in for a review, or, <laughs> or for my own personal. So I remember I contacted you guys, and you were just like, you know what? Um, I think we might have some parts to make one more. I'll get back oh, yeah. to you. And then literally within a few days, like, yeah, we have the parts. We're putting it together. Do you yeah. want it? Okay. Okay. Bang. And within another two days, I had the watch on my wrist. And it was just a cool experience. One, it's an experience you almost, you will never get with a major brand. Um, yeah. They, they literally just laugh at you if you even approach them. Yeah. Or they probably <laughs> wouldn't respond to you at all. Um, probably and, that, yeah. And it was also cool because now after speaking to you, realize that I'm talking to one of the two people behind the bread. So it's literally yeah. those two people. And yeah. uh, it was just such a cool experience to, to have that type of a response. Um, and, and the ability to, to even ask that question and, and, and have you guys kind of say, yeah, it's possible. We have the parts. <laughs> We're going to make it. Um, it was such a cool experience. Um, Overall, just been a, a huge fan of the brand. I, I think you guys make some amazing, it. unique watches um, and unique, but still wearable and comfortable. Um, especially Thank that bracelet. You. That bracelet is is on the um, on the Calypso is just extremely comfortable. Um, and yeah, it, yeah. It wears like really it. well. It's cool. Um, Thank you. I appreciate it. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and it's one of the main reasons I wanted to get you on to kind of kind of run through the history of the brand and, you know, some of the experiences you've had. Uh, I mean, now that, you, of course, now you have the Contra Gauss, the, the GMT, uh, you guys have had a diver. Um, do you see in the future maybe a chronograph, a dress watch, you see anything like that in the future? Yes. Uh, I have a design ready for a, a chronograph. Of course. Um, so probably that will be released sometime in the future, yeah. Okay. Uh, and there's always, yeah, always, uh, also uh, one or, or two more versions of the Country Gauss coming up. And okay. uh, one is a bit more dressier and a bit pilot-ish. Mm -hmm. uh, and one is uh, a, a downscale version of of this this one the premium one we released just now okay any chance of maybe a a evolution or another version of the calypso of the calypso sport yeah i have been trying to figure out how we would do it mm -hmm. because there i i, I don't want to make the same thing again uh -huh, uh -huh. i just i don't want to like just order more parts and make more of them i i wanted to improve it and make it still unquestionably a calypso but not the same okay. so yeah I'm, I'm yeah i'm i'm experimenting with a few designs <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um uh, one thing i also wanted to ask you and, and you could kind of 
I hope you could you could kind of shine a light on it. One interesting I was always found about the Calypso sport was it's weird. It seems as if the the date wheel is not um, is almost like a metallic material. Uh, it, 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 if you could correct me if I'm wrong, what is that? What is that about the date wheel? It, it has a different texture to it than what I'm used to when it, on a date wheel. If you could expand on that a bit. Yeah, so it's it, it's a, it is a, like a sandblasted it, when you when you do sandblasting with a, a very uh, light pressure, mm -hmm. you get this matte metallic uh, surface without breaking up the printing on it. Mm -hmm. So that's what what it is. Uh, wow. so we wanted the whole dive to be uh, uh, contra glare or what do you call it? Yeah, yeah. as I told you before, I, I didn't want, wanted to be intrusive uh, in, in like bright right environments yeah. so that's what it is yeah so it's, it's the same uh, it's the same wheel as mm -hmm. as you get when you you buy the uh, the, the movement but it's it's treated with a light some some blessing okay it, it's definitely a cool feature it, and as you say the legend overall legibility of, of the dial is great already but then when you add that on top it, it's it just works perfectly um all together with the design at what point in time did you guys decide that you were going to do that or or how did that come about that decision to do that with the date will i mean a lot of things happen just by trying a few other things and <laughs> you just <laughs> accidentally do it uh, so i really like everything that you can be blessed i, I think mm -hmm. the the texture of, of be blessing is really cool and that it's it's enhances legibility and that's why we have uh, bead blasted hands on the contract app as well because it mm. catches light from every angle so yeah. it's always it's always uh, legible yeah um, and so I, I guess we just tried it with the with the all the components that we had and, and it worked on on uh, on the date wheel it also worked on the enameling of the rotor that we are doing right now so the the color of the enameling is is matte when it should be uh, glossy. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, <laughs> they're asking, hey, hi. Don't hesitate to show some watches here to support the conversation. Do you have any of the the models around you? Anything? Even what do you have around? Uh, I can see if I have something here. Let's go. Let's bring it in. Bring it in. I was trying to find a few uh, prototypes. Mm -hmm. I can just show you this if you can see this. Okay, that's that's the. That's that the was. House? It's a super early version of the country house. With it's the. A, um... It's a stupid design that we tried. Oh, okay. So basically, our idea was if you see the tiny holes in there, mm -hmm. like on there, the idea was to have a, a vessel with hooks that would press down the dial and you would be able to service it from the top. Oh, wow. And, uh, I can't find the, the bezel right now, but it, it's a bezel with tiny, tiny hooks on it. That would, uh, I thought would be a revolutionizing <laughs> idea, but it, uh, yeah, it didn't work out too good. Uh, that, but it sounds like a great idea to, to just yeah. be able to service. Kind of, yeah, uh, I thought so too, but yeah, no. <laughs> So we made a lot of prototypes for this one. Oh, okay. Uh, and we also have this where the uh, a later version of the uh, of the contract house is where it's it's a unibody. So this this bezel is actually made completely attached to the case. So this is 3D printed, and you don't have to press anything into it. It's it's every every angle every Nook and cranny is, is on there from the beginning. Wow. That was pretty cool too. It almost works as well, but not quite. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. So what else you got? So, I got your favorite. Oh, yes, 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 definitely. And the, yeah, it's, it's super cool, this one. Yeah. Yeah, with the touch of orange and. and touch yeah. of orange. 
Yeah, that, what was the what was the idea behind the touch of orange um, on a dial? Was it also another thing in regards to legibility? What was it? Can I just make a wrist roll? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, I don't. I, I think I really like orange. Uh, it, it's uh, so. I'm oftentimes I'm out fishing or or uh, sailing. Mm -hmm. It's like this. Uh, to me, it's like this functional. Um, you know workman's color kind yeah. of if you know what i mean yeah so it's all it, it's oftentimes used to be legible out to sea so someone can find you if you fall overboard or so yeah and yeah i wanted to bring that in into my designs and i i it, you, you see it also in the advertising that you guys did for the watch like some of the pictures are fishermen um, yeah. with with that orange kind of coat and it just works perfectly with the um with the watch um you know what uh, if you could just show the the calypso a little bit closer to the camera so more more people could kind of see because i know for a, a couple of you here it's probably the first time they're seeing this watch is and, it close enough oh yeah perfect so yeah it, it's it's just for everyone watching so it's the dial is just one Sorry. it's it's this perfect kind of grayish color and then with the orange it really just stands out and you have these black borders on your markers and it, it, it's perfect and it's at, and correct me if I'm 100 meters water resistant yep um and the, the bracelet is integrated but it's it's actually very 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 comfortable um oh yeah it is I, I, it's I know super durable too. So yeah. the, the the spring bar for this goes mm -hmm. a long way into the lugs. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember <laughs> it, it's 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 hard to change at times, but at the same time it's very secure. Like yeah, it, there's it, it never really a, there's never a question that this is gonna come out. You're just like, Okay, no, this is So this, th is this staying here. rock falling accident I had yesterday. That wouldn't have been a problem with this one. Yeah. This would just have powered through it. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that was uh, the idea with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that that uh, that is definitely a, a boss watch. I remember I was talking to Brad about it, and, and it kind of gives us some 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 oyster perpetual vibes. Um, yeah. It, but it's just a really comfortable, comfortable watch. Um, but it's it's a bit like oyster perpetual, but it's, it's a bit more uh, industrial. Yeah, like it's functional designish. Yeah, kind of deal. yeah. It, where where it's it's what's the saying where that the form meets function? Like it 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 yeah. It, it's it's a no bullshit design. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but Eric, you just want to say thank you for for coming on with us. I just really wanted to have this opportunity one to introduce our followers to the brand. They've heard us talk about the brand a lot, but kind of want to show them the, the man behind the brand, uh, Mr. Mr. E. Anderson himself. Um, Thank you. Thanks. I just wanted to, before we kind of head on out, is there anything else you wanted to share with um, the people watching? Anything else about the brand you wanted to talk about? I mean, it's honor being here. And of course, if, you, if you're a fan of, of of the watches then follow us because we got some pretty interesting stuff coming so yeah, yeah. Good, thanks good. for watching everyone yep. and you guys could find um them on ec anderson watch co on um instagram uh we're gonna be posting this video on our youtube channel the watch with us channel so you guys can watch it afterwards and of course um, the video will be up for the next 24 hours but I just wanted to say thank you, Eric, one, uh, once again for coming on with us and kind thank of you. going over the brand. Um, if you guys have any, uh, oh, ah, uh, actually, right before I was about to, you know, Ricardo, if you can spend some time, we'd love to hear about Eric's personal his, history prior to starting up ECA. I know you went over a little bit, but um, I guess that the fans want to know. The fans want to know. Yes. So, uh, okay. I was uh, raised in, in Gothenburg and then I started a, a university in, uh, in the middle of the country. I was studying actually human resource because I didn't, I didn't 
think back then that you could live off doing cool mechanical inventions mm. because of all all things digital. That seemed yeah. impossible. So I, I studied something else and uh, that was okay. And then I uh, went abroad. I studied uh, business management in uh, France. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And after that, I, uh, I moved to Stockholm to work as a uh, uh, recruitment consultant in uh, in the IT industry. So I work with uh, um, Spotify, uh, Skype, and wow. companies like that. Yeah, it, it sounds cool, but uh, <laughs> mentally it was suicide. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I just, eventually I just quit my job because I I, I hated it, and mm. I really wanted to do something with watches, and that's and that's that's where I when I started this. So that's when I started the whole, uh, you know, reaching out in forums, showing my designs and stuff like that. And that that happened uh, simultane simultaneously as, as me quitting my job. Oh, wow. Well, Eric, thank you. Thank you for giving us a little bit more personal history on you. Guys, thank you for watching. If you have any more questions for Eric, definitely hit up the EC Anderson uh, the Instagram account. Um, he is the person that will be responding to you. So yep. you'll be you'll be talking directly to him. If you guys have any more questions for him or any more questions about the brand, uh, once again, thank you, Eric, for coming on with us. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And we'll see everybody soon. Thank you.